Okay, so now we're gonna go, 15 seconds. So let's start, okay? You wait until your slides show up. And don't yeah. push, the, don't move the slides. <laughs> so uh, my name's Michael Cusick. Um, we're gonna be talking about personalized and refined uh, assessments of scientific excellence. This is work started by Mark Vidal and, and completed by a team. And so I'll soon define what we mean by personalized and refined in a, in a minute. But first, I want to give an example of, of the disparities that can come up in measuring success. Who's the most Googled celebrity in the world right now? It's Kim Kardashian, and this is even before she dropped her baby this past weekend. <laughs> Compared to the boss, she's got three times as many Google hits, though the boss has a tremendous <laughs> accomplishments. If we go to a movie actor, it's no better. Tom Hanks only has one-fifth of the thing. So these disparities are real. This is an extreme example. And, but we're going to try to show that these disparities come up in measurement of scientific success as well. So what's the problem with conventional measures of scientific success? Well, they count everybody the same. There's no individual uh, separation to those who made the most significant contribution to the uh, sequence of the human genome, which is Craig Venter, versus those among the hundreds of authors that are, that are in the middle. They both get the same uh, attribution for this paper. And reviews, as we just heard from the questions before, are used to game the impact factors because they get, tend to get very many higher reviews than original contributions. And so we believe that a personalized index should exclude these type of things. And so here's our definition of the Uber index, or U index from now on. The number of original papers signed as co-corresponding author that have at least one times 100 citations each. So you get, in this way, it distinguishes prestige from popularity. It's based, obviously, on the H index, which we'll hear some more about in other talks, but it's also refined. It has a very small uh, number, a single integer, not out to three significant digits like impact factor is. Why does this matter? Well, if you ask somebody how many Picassos can you name, the average person could probably only name three. If you ask a scientist what his most significant contributions were, you get one, two, or three. Very few people, very few scientists can get beyond that point. So how do you calculate a U-index? Uh, going back to Craig Venter, you just count uh, order by the citations, make sure everything is, he is a co-corresponding author, that nothing is review. You just count one, two, three, four, five, six until you reach the cutoff, and he has a U index of nine. We go back to the paper, and now we see where's before their H indexes were within range of each other to a middle author versus the first author, their U indexes are tenfold different. And so we think this uh, really measures the, attribute, the contribution to the paper. You can do uh, institutes as well as people. Here are two institutes down the street, the Whitehead and the Broad. By Google hits and H index, they're fairly comparable to each other. Um, um, but if you now look at a personalized and refined landscape where we have uh, uh, three PR measurements, um, how do they rank? Well, you would expect them to rank pretty much the same. And the three of are the U index, as I just said, the publications in high impact journals, and maximum citation, all personalized, refined, contribution, uh, single reviews, excluded, and contributing author. Here, the whitehead is several fold better than the broad, whereas previously, by the non PR impacts, they were uh, pretty much comparable. And the outliers here for comparison are the Salk Institute and the MBL Institute. You can do countries. Uh, Belgium is divided into two sections, Wallonia and Flemish. If you do a simple Google search, you see that everybody's heard of Flemish science and Walloon science uh, barely registers. You go to the personalized and refined Uber index, you find that they are pretty comparable to each other. In this case, Luxembourg is the outlier. And so this is also defying expectation. Um, you can do um, scientific fields, like anything that ends with the word ohm. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, genome, of course, everybody's heard of, so that gets the highest number of PubMed hits, proteome, transcriptome, and interactome. Interactome, nobody really says the word, so it doesn't score that many hits. But when you look at a personalized, refined landscape again, uh, you find that, of course, genome's way off by itself, but uh, interactome and transcriptome are, again, comparable to each other, despite the, the tenfold difference in the number of PubMed hits that they're getting. And finally, you can look at journals. That's what started the impact factor altogether. Here is a landscape of journals. As we just heard, Science, Nature, New England Journal, Medicine tend to be very exceptionally uh, uh, scored by this. In this case, the non-PR is the uh, impact factor. But you can find disparities. And, and here are some, uh, four examples where the measurement by the PR index is higher or lower than the expectation based on simple impact factor. 
So I have to speak very fast. I want to thank you all. Um, my conclusion slide is that no single metric should be used as the sole measurement of scientific excellence. Instead, a landscape of personally refined metrics is proposed for consideration. And since we've used Einstein before, I used another famous quote from Einstein to, for your pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.